Michael R. Fletcher. Now sit back and prepare to be entertained. Greetings and welcome back to the Dripping Bucket Podcast with your hosts, some people. And today we are joined by the awesome Adam Holcomb, author of the necromancer called Gam Gam and the Night Revenant. And uh, some these ink will be coming to us uh, once I finish, once once we bully you sufficiently to get it done. And <laughs> more sometime Gam next Gam. year, depends yeah. on baby. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, today we are officially going to talk about Grimdark Grannies. But yeah. first, so is this your? Uh, this is way more important. Uh, is this your first kid coming, or do you already have? Do you already have one? <laughs> yeah, this is my first kid. Uh, yeah. so you don't yet dread summer holidays. <laughs> exactly. Well, okay. I don't know like, what to expect yet. Yeah, which uh, my daughter will. This is her last week of school, and then she's going to be home for like two months. And Jeez, sir. what the fuck do you do? Like, I already spent enough time hiding in the basement. Like, I, <laughs> Crystal, are you worried about that? Like, just having, like, um, what, you've got, like, 14 feral... Yeah, yeah, there's a whole lot of them, but, like, we, we've been we've been homeschooling for a while, so, like, I'm used to ignoring them. Um, uh, so that <laughs> helped. <laughs> oh. oh. That's on your child. <laughs> for at least a little while she'll just be yeah. in daycare no matter what yeah. time of the year so <laughs> yeah. yeah you have to survive like the slog of of uh before daycare first and then i feel like that hardens you <laughs> you learn some things about your core self in those yeah those and things. just remember after five years it will very, 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 yep. very, very slowly begin to almost get start getting better. better. <laughs> and after about need, uh... seven years, you can almost you you can actually start enjoying it a little bit. You know, being a parent. Yeah. And by yeah, thirty, years, to reach the they just completely the ignore age. you, and you know, now you're you're sort of they make fun of you for not knowing. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the yeah. current slang Once... is. Once they stop thinking you're the center of the universe, it's both like ego shattering, but also a little bit freeing because then they, um, you know, look elsewhere for answers about life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. Uh, it, it's freeing, but it's also yeah. like, great. She has no use for me now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think that's about the age that she'll be able to learn the board games I want her to learn so I can play them more often. Oh, there you go. Damn it. I mean, yeah, you could play them goal with her kids. and enjoy them less. <laughs> sorry, Adam. Sorry, Adam. You shouldn't talk to crusty old parents like us. You should talk to <laughs> parents who. Are still yeah, in the it's all going to be fine. It's going to be so much yeah. fun. The first five years are they're a miracle from God. It's so <laughs> great. It's so great. It's because you don't sleep anymore, so you're it's like a little oh, bit of yeah. a hostage situation. You get used to not being sane. From Stockholm. Anyway, oh, yeah. so tell us about uh, your grim dark gran uh, granny, uh, necromancer called not Gam Grimdark. Gam. Tell us about the character, a little bit about the story. You know, without spoiling stuff. Uh, you didn't do anything. Launches into this all. topic and away from all the dangerous shit. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my not very grim dark granny. Uh, is, is uh gam gam yes oh, gam, gam, has, gam. I, where's the gam? beautiful little heart though. yeah um and so she is a grandmotherly necromancer um who just recently became a necromancer actually at yeah. the ripe old age of i haven't said yet so old <laughs> um and she I mean, uh is that's that's when you get speaking of parenting that's when you get free time back so it tracks that she's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Needed, needed a hobby <laughs> how about necromancy yeah why not it's a little bit of a spoiler but uh yeah. she has a lot of free time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
laughing because I know why she has so much free time and suddenly Necromancer Call Gram Gram is Grimdark Bad Girl. <laughs> anyway, so she is traveling to uh, through the, the, the uh, empire that she yeah. is a resident of. And uh, she runs, so then the book actually focuses on uh, a 12-year-old girl who is on the run, and then Gam Gam's kind of a main protagonist as well. Um, and the 12-year-old girl, Mina, she is on the run from some bad guys, runs into Gam Gam, um, and Gam Gam, being the nice old lady she is, offers to help um, her get out of trouble, and uh, that then, yeah, raises some undead to uh, dress them up in nice cozy knitwear and then go fight some bad guys. <laughs> the knitted, the knitted um, accoutrement for the zombies was, like, yeah. just a beautiful little, like, only, I don't know, it just feels like one of those things that nobody else would have thought of but for you, for whatever reason, the specific assembly of your personality. Um, knitted, I can't knitted. explain it either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but it was really good. Like it was just such a like it became this really um, powerful and meaningful conversation about personhood. Like you know, she's raising these people from the dead uh, and respects them enough to knit for them so that they're warm enough <laughs> while they're fighting the the big evil that's after Mina. Um, and it's just like it's so ridiculous, but also so moving. So that was that was really well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to try to blend uh, like ridiculousness into seriousness yeah. as well. Yeah. So like, yeah. it should be crazy, but also kind of isn't. Yeah. Um, I enjoy aiming for that goal. <laughs> yeah, you definitely definitely hit it with with this whole <laughs> concept. So then. I mean, I know I bullied you into it, um, but I don't actually remember where the concept came from. Like, was it something that you had been wanting to work on for a while, or? So, uh, Gam Gam specifically as a character came as a concept of um, a D and D character. Oh, okay. Um, I am. I was a forever DM. Um, so I made a bunch of characters and never played them, uh, and then. Uh, that changed recently. I finally got to play my first character. Uh, one of my other Yay. friends is DMing our new campaign, so that's exciting. Um, but anyway, so Gam Gam was one of the ideas that I had. Um, and that actually came off, I think, a meme on D&D memes. <laughs> Someone else is <laughs> wanting funny. to be, like, the grandma of the party. And I'm like, what's the funniest, like, class that a grandma could be? And I'm like, necromancer would kind of be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> And then uh, there was a, I remember this kind of vividly, um, there was a post on Twitter that was like, unlikely heroes should be unlikely, not just a random farm hand, like, becoming the hero. And like, where are the real unlikely heroes? And then I made a comment about Gam Gam on that. And I'm like, or made some comments about like, because someone said like, old ladies should be ones or something. Yeah. And then that's when you and Connor hopped in and harassed me <laughs> until and this was made. Yeah, relentlessly <laughs> bullying you until you wrote the story for us. Um, and it, it worked out really nicely for me because I happen to really like the story. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Bully for people into writing the stories you want to read then. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, this is the way. <laughs> This is the way I learned it from Mahir, who bullies other people into writing the story. <laughs> he's, he's good at it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, not being a later middle-aged woman, uh, <laughs> what kind of uh, research did you do into uh, into the character, and did you use um, sensitivity readers uh, to make sure that you nailed the the finer details of of being a granny? Um. <laughs> I, uh, so research was just, uh, having grandmas of my own. <laughs> Happen to know some elderly women. I'm friends with elderly women. <laughs> You're an elderly woman ally. Yes. 
So yeah, I just uh, mostly the character was based off of kind of like uh, the the night. Not to say my grandmas aren't nice, but like the nicest features of them that they could be. <laughs> like so combining the, them together. The, best, the nicest thing that you can say about your grandmothers is that they'd make good necromancers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> personality before she became a necromancer. Oh. Um, but I think uh, both of them would make great great necromancers. Yeah. Um. <laughs> They've got that entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. The <laughs> everything knitting came from my wife, who is yeah. a month younger than me, but has the heart of an elderly woman. <laughs> and oh man, uh, I did not use sensitivity readers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you used you used a sensitivity reader. Um, on the knitting issue specifically, and oh, those yeah. of us that that do knit felt yeah, it's important to get knitting um, details correct because under that's, a, that's an angry by crowd. your knitting representation. <laughs> I yeah, Sarah helps me with the knitting. I like I'm like I need to add this in because I'm getting yelled at that I don't have pearl. Um, anywhere in my story, um, and I'm like, so what the hell is a pearl, and how do I? Add so do you know now? Do you know now what what a pearl is, Adam? I uh, do. Um, I I you. hid this a little bit, but Virginia on the latest post I was doing like, give me a word and I'll share a part. And she's like, Pearl, yeah. you coward. Yeah. yeah. Um, I still didn't have pearl in there, and I ran to Sarah. I'm like, I need to find a spot for pearl right now. <laughs> <laughs> So there's been 15 minutes while I was trying to figure out where to add it. Um, and she helped me <laughs> figure that out. She's a hero. Sorry, Virginia. Truly <laughs> a hero. Yeah, the truth comes out. Yeah. Every bucket where um, investigative journalists get to the incitive, incisive <laughs> truths of the world, <laughs> writing world. <laughs> oh, Sarah's a hero. That's what we've, we've established. Um, your wife. She helps a lot with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she must think she must think we're all so unhinged with like the problems that you bring her <laughs> which I she mean is very close in personality to me so I think she gets it <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good. Yeah. well I was just thinking like if she thinks the writing community is unhinged then <laughs> that's accurate so well I'm a part of it what can so. I say <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna try to recover some seriousness. Um, <laughs> so I I thought it would be fun for like having you guys both on, just because of suddenly I know two people who have grandmothers um, as their focus in 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 their stories, in a way that's you know kind of underrepresented in in science fiction and fantasy as you said and I, I'm curious Fletcher you as well like <laughs> why but like obviously the answer is because it's awesome but also like where, where, why why did that why did that become something important um, yeah for me it was a I've got a couple of uh, writer friends who are let's yeah. say later middle aged women right um, and um, you know I, I've seen them many times grumble about how few yeah. characters there are for them to relate to and that that sort of the idea of writing a book with not just one but two grannies as the main characters Dueling and this sort of like opposing grannies i don't know what they call like heroic grimdark kind of story where yeah. it's it's violent and it's ugly um but you know these grandmothers are kicking ass and then figuring out how to make that actually work and yeah. be believable like right through to the end uh was just too much fun yeah. and um you know i sort of went with the you know one military veteran and one sort of like you know who went to school and is well educated and studied and stuff right. and both finding their own paths um and uh, uh teresa frohawk uh, who wrote uh, oh. uh nephilim books uh yeah uh Miserere, which i'm probably screwing up the pronunciation um she she did a test read for me and then just totally pulled apart my handling of joint pain and and you know how much everything hurts and it was like i didn't i didn't go nearly far enough apparently yeah 
Um, yeah, so. Did you, did but, you uh, yeah, double down was, uh, on revisions with the joint pain? Yeah, yeah, I had to go women. back oh, and man. she's like, she's not dropping it into a you know, comfortable squat in the woods. Like, that ain't happening. Yeah. Her knees won't do that. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> uh, I guess that's why you're wondering about sensitivity readers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You I got slattered. Like... I got mine beat me up. Yeah, good. The good news you about <laughs> necromancers is that uh, all the undead do stuff for them. Yeah. So I don't need Cam to be yeah. super physical. Yeah. So she plops down on the ground hard, and then the necromancer will help her back up if she's like sitting on the ground or something. Yeah. Or a, yeah, a zombie that... or whatever. <laughs> that was that was such a good. Um... Yeah. I mean, like of all people who need extra help uh, in life, it's like yeah, that track. Like I too would in my <laughs> in my twilight years like to have some. Undead help, so that I don't have to do this shit anymore. <laughs> I can clean the house. Yeah, exactly. The kids do the do dishes. It. I need zombies for that. <laughs> Until the rotting meat starts <laughs> sloughing off onto the dishes. What's what's this floating in the sink? Is that a finger? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's time for you to go back to the the afterlife. Sorry, pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah so i guess adam for you it would have been like a similar thing just of there's not enough of this and that interests me probably one of uh the inspirations for it too is uh quen b olsen commenting on oh. that a lot and specifically yeah. going out of her way to make miss percy's hat like with a 40 year old woman in it and stuff yeah and that kind of like you know, as a young male, I didn't notice it as much, um, like the non-representation of other areas. So I'm like, okay, well, I need to focus on that when I actually write so that like I hit more areas because I don't want to write the same characters all the time. Yeah. Also, 40 is not old. Just, so just, you know, <laughs> fuck I, out for that shit. Did I say old for 40? No, you didn't. No, just trying to lead it was, you It was trap. inferred. It's hinted at. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fletcher, off the top of your head, what's the last book you wrote that had a 40-year-old woman in the foreground and not just the dead so what's the well, What's the last yeah. book I wrote? Yeah. Well, like the one no, that I just read. Wrote. No, you read. Oh, read. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably Miss Percy. Yeah, right. Which is also an excellent book. We'll have to have her on to, to kick your yeah. ass. But... Yeah, yeah, that was... I, I hate cozy <laughs> fantasy, and that was probably one yeah. of the best books I read that year. Yeah, yeah, those were, that, those were really good books. I got the second one too, um, and I guess the third one's coming soon. And I'm just like, I I'm feral over these books. I <laughs> it's a weird feeling of like, oh, I'm approaching this character's age. I thought I was still a young person. <laughs> nope, not in science fiction and fantasy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sarah loves the Miss Percy books. She is so yeah. excited for book three. She kept yelling at me like, ask Quen when the next one's coming. When's the next <laughs> one coming? Like, no, you're not allowed to ask writers that. They get snippy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adam's like, no thanks. I like being alive. <laughs> like, respect I don't know, Sarah. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> respect Ms. Olsen too much to <laughs> or, yeah so then um so that leads kind of makes me curious about for bounties inc which was <laughs> the project that you had been working on before i bullied you into gem gem um that that feeling of i want i want to be aware of the focus of who gets to be heroes did that transfer over to Bounty Zinc after, or did that exist in Bounty Zinc before? Um, it was uh probably probably a little bit before because I actually have like of the main characters, one is um like a twenty year old guy, yeah. um who's the son of like a wealthy person who dies and gets he gets all the money, um. Nice. And but the probably the second most important character in the series 
is um, some buff, badass, 50-year-old woman. So Amazing. <laughs> still end up having similar effect. Um, yeah. Where I'm like, I want, like, uh, like, that kind of disgruntled, like, mentor character, but mm-hmm. I also didn't want them to be, like, a smart mentor, because no smart mentor would be like, let's do this stupid business idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then I'm like, well... The main character, Wynn, is a guy, so I'm like, I'll just make the other one a girl. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's basically, I describe her a little bit as, like, a gender-bent Boba Fett with a personality, um, compared to the original, <laughs> anyway. It's an amazing pitch. I feel, <laughs> I, I feel very seen and represented by, like, an older mentor um, who's just also stupid. <laughs> like you know collecting you and connor um around with me is like yeah i'll help but also uh, i don't know shit so good luck sorry (laughs) (sighs) so then um oh i lost my train of thought so then because the reason i ask about the representation in bound and zinc is because of my friend here, um, the pill bug, um, and I'm yes. wondering if you know that that sci-fi angle of being able to really play with that I, kind of the same conversation of personhood. You know, first you had it with zombies, and now you have it with you know an assembly, like a swarm of bugs. Like I, I guess I haven't read it yet, so I don't actually understand. Yeah. But also, um. Yeah, I can run through some of the characters, because, like, um, it was a lot of fun to play with each of the characters and how that kind of, like, as you're saying, represents personhood, because I have um, an artificial intelligence uh, who is disguising himself as a cyborg because um, artificial intelligence is illegal at that degree um, that he is, so he's like, oh yeah, I'm, like, uh, definitely human with a lot of robot parts, Um, (laughs) and, like, just playing with, like, how would that view itself as like a person and try to disguise yeah. itself as a person but it also doesn't understand personhood so it does like strange things um like riding a corpse uh <laughs> driving a corpse um as was talked about <laughs> or whatever that was um or like it, it just um has like going through like peculiar thinking of like what's the most direct way to do this, even if it is, like, horrifically grotesque because it doesn't care, like, at yeah. all? Um, and then I have, like, a swarm of bugs that is a hive mind um, that uh, like kind of, like, have a chameleon effect for changing colors, oh, so cool. they'll form up to create the shape of a human being and then change right. the colors so they actually, like, look like a human. Um, unless okay. you, like, look closely and start seeing like parts of their body like shake and wings like flutter from their skin this is horror to Crystal's me Crystal's like, so I ready so, I can't uh, so like I, I, something that I notice as I talk to other writers is that people have themes that they gravitate towards whether they realize it or not and for Fletcher, it's definitely like um, how our experience um, informs who we are as people and what happens to you as you remove experiences from us. Um, for you, I'm sensing this theme of questioning personhood. And I'm really <laughs> curious if it's something that you set out to do intentionally or if it was like a subconscious thing that now probably that not no <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> it's mostly just like a yeah seeing um just like humanizing different aspects yeah. of characters and whatever and seeing how like to do that and stuff so probably mostly unintentional just me wanting to create interesting characters and try to give them depth and then winding up with zombies where I knitted <laughs> where yes. and bugs in the general shape of it. Like, now that you describe it, it's even more horrifying <laughs> than I realized. Um, and yet... It might it might get worse for you oh, no. when you read it. Oh, no. They also, like, 
They can like drill into the ear and uh, like go into the brain. So do you have a background <laughs> in in like horror as a reader or like what is happening here? No, Why as a kid I hated horror. Oh my god. Um, I like, I really like, like, sci-fi horror more so. Like, okay. Um, when I was, uh, in high school, I loved, uh, is it, like, Pandorum, I think, is the movie? Um, that was, like, a sci-fi horror, they were, right. like, long-distance spaceship crash thing. Um, something like that. Uh, and Alien I enjoyed, um, uh, more recently, Ooh. actually, and didn't see that when I was younger and stuff, so <laughs> I got more into it now. Um, and it's giving me more interest to, like, explore, like, a horror aspect, because yeah. I wanted to write, um, a horror book. I also love the Resident Evil games, um, so zombies theme there. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um... So specifically sci-fi horror, uh, which, yeah. I mean, those two things go really well together, because it's, like... Yes, I love the combination there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I wanted to, like, explore horror, but, like, Sarah made a good comment that if I do a bounty in horror, I can't make it, like, terrifying, because people will be jumping on in bounty ink and being like, oh, this is, like, a funny, action-y, high-beat thing, and then all of a sudden, just <laughs> horror book, and it's like, right. oh, I'm terrified now, <laughs> or, like, people, like, wouldn't read it or anything, and I'm like, okay, so it's gotta be, like, actiony with some horror elements yeah um maybe like kind of do that way and then i'll just explore horror on uh, standalone which is the book i talked about this morning with you and connor oh, probably yes, okay the i will try to make the... that one far more oh no the oh. other one the one that i haven't oh. written uh the sapphic uh horror aladdin retelling Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So, what I'm hearing is, I've bullied you sufficiently, and this one is back on. <laughs> this is the dog. It's, it's always hovering there, it's just yeah. I have to find the time to make it with the other Man. stuff juggling. Yeah, re relatable, though. <laughs> the, the, trick is, the trick is to avoid working on the book that you're supposed to be publishing, as you learned with Gam Gam. Yes. <laughs> Gam Gam prevented me from working on Bonnie Ink. Bonnie Ink stopped me from working on The Wishing Stone. The Wishing Stone stopped me from working on Bonnie Ink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like, Fletcher's yeah. got, got an, an entire trilogy that he wrote yeah. to avoid oh, yeah, I wrote, working on. Yeah, the last Manifest Delusions book. I, I think, like, this, it, in between book two and three, I wrote the entire City of Sacrifice trilogy and all of the Obsidian Path. <laughs> it's like, after six books, it was like, I, I yeah, think I should, should probably go back this. and finish that. <laughs> Might as well one day. Was yeah. it worth it to actually finish it? Please say yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, I am glad that I don't ever have to think about that again. And oh. anyone who's read it isn't going to ask if there's going to be any more books. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Fletcher answer, too. It's just like, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm done with this shit. <laughs> We got to move on. You can't yeah. keep doing the same shit over and over again. Got to keep trying new things. <laughs> Hence, Granny. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hence, Granny. <laughs> so uh, the the undead that Gam Gam raises. Yeah. Uh, what what flavor of undead did you go for? Are they sort of like mindless zombies, or do they retain uh, self? For uh, the first book, you see actually two different versions. Um, she can very easily kind of raise up puppets basically um mm -hmm. and control those directly like giving simple commands um and later in the book she um is able to basically tie the spirits back to their bodies temporarily to give them more control over themselves and then she just holds the connection um so that they're more intelligent and able to help them out um so it's not just a horde rushing at the bad guys it's like an intelligent group of people well and also yeah, that... like in theory uh requires less intervention from her because like the multitasking yeah. like if i remember the story correctly the multitasking of um trying to um direct all troll the a bunch kinda, of it. yeah limited that could many. be like kind of hard because they do simple commands so like if you have yeah. like 50 people that you all had to tell do different things it'd yeah. be really hard to juggle whereas by having 50 people who control it's a harder spell so to speak but 
now they can like figure it out what to do and she can just focus on the spell knitting and stuff like that yeah yeah she can yeah. knit on and the sidelines yeah. yeah and yeah. i was like aware undead uh for the potential that you know they get to they can moan and tell you about how awful it is <laughs> and complain and bitch about what it's like to be dead and yeah. you know like well you really haven't done me a favor now have you <laughs> this is pretty terrible here it's like <sighs> now, there's another i did notice that mindless i did notice that theme in uh city <laughs> path <laughs> they may have may have snuck in there <laughs> there you go more and more things that you have in common with michael <laughs> You must be on the path to great success. Yep. <laughs> and on that bombshell, <laughs> uh, this is uh, probably a lovely time for us to wrap up. Join us yeah. again next week or whenever the fuck this episode comes out. Yeah. I don't know when. Ask Crystal. Uh, and Adam will be, I think, joining us again. So, yeah. uh, Adam, thank you for uh, for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Thank you very much, Adam. And we'll be back.